The Department of Education is opening a civil rights investigation into Harvard University's legacy admission policies. The preferential treatment of the children of alumni is facing new scrutiny after the Supreme Court's ruling against affirmative action. For more, I'm joined by Professor Raj Chetty, who teaches economics at Harvard. Professor, you recently did a study of elite, elite college admissions that has been very much in the news. What did that study exactly find? Yeah, that's right, John. So uh, thanks for having me. We just released a new study uh, that uses extensive data from colleges linked to anonymized tax records to look at who gets in to top colleges in America, places like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Stanford, and what happens after they attend those colleges. And one of the main findings is that children from high-income families, the top 1% of the income distribution, families making more than $650,000 a year, they have significantly higher chances of getting in, even if they have the same academic credentials as measured, say, by their SAT scores when they apply. And so what we then do is investigate why that's the case and why that matters. Annie Lowry at The Atlantic writes in, in the work, uh, writes about your work, and, and the headline of her piece is, why you, meaning the reader, have to care about these 12 colleges? Why should people care about what happens at these 12 colleges or at these elite colleges? Yeah, so, you know, let's start with just the simple fact that these colleges in the grand scheme of things don't educate all that many Americans, right? Only half a percent of people or less have attended one of these 12 Ivy League, highly selective private colleges. So you might ask, you know, why do they really matter then in the grand scheme of things for economic mobility, for giving people opportunities? And what we show in this paper is that even though they educate a very small number of children, these colleges are really gateways to positions of influence and the elite in America. So if you look at people who are CEOs, Supreme Court justices, politicians, uh, leading scientists, an enormous fraction have come from one of these 12 colleges. And what we then go on to show in the study is, it's not just that these colleges are admitting the types of folks who would go on to do great things, they do select very qualified people, but what we actually show by comparing, for example, a child who happens to get in off of the wait list to a place like Yale or Princeton versus a child who doesn't get in off the wait list, getting into one of these colleges is transformative in terms of changing your life chances. You're much more likely to reach the top of the income distribution, work at a very prestigious firm, go to a top graduate school, and be on that pathway to be a leader. So the reason I think we should all care is your shot at kind of reaching the top and influencing many people's lives runs through these colleges. And so I think diversity and representation at these institutions really matters for all Americans. And Professor Chetty, you're going to participate in a Brookings event tomorrow, I think, or at least you're scheduled to. And one of the questions the Brookings Institution event asks is, do colleges act as escalators of upward mobility or as perpetuators of elite advantage? So I'm now asking, I guess, to broaden from those elite institutions you and I were just discussing to the larger concept in the American dream that if you go to college, you're on an escalator towards success. What's your view on that? Yeah, so that's, I think, absolutely right, that colleges can be an escalator to success. They can be a path to achieving the American dream. But I think also, given the way the American higher education system is stratified by class, where kids from lower income families, unfortunately, have poorer prospects of attending one of these colleges, that's a great escalator. And kids from richer families, through various means, are more likely to apply, more likely to get in, more likely to be on that track. When you have that sort of system, colleges can actually end up amplifying disparities and creating a persistence of privilege rather than leveling the playing field and creating more opportunities. So I think a key focus in the context of higher education in America is how we distribute those opportunities more widely, for instance, by admitting a broader group of students to these elite colleges and more broadly. Raj Chetty, economics professor at Harvard. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure, John.